Feels like it's been a while, and maybe it has, so welcome in to the KSO Show. And I'm not talking about a recruiting update, even though that this is what that is. I'm talking about having my microphone. It is unfortunate for all of you that I still sound like crap, even though the quality of sound is better. But I think we're uh, getting better, and by Saturday night, it should be in a much better place. We'll see if the Cats are in a better place come Saturday night after their game with KU this coming weekend. But with it being... Number one, a night kick, which helps. And then it being a rivalry with KU and everything else going into this weekend and the fact K-State hasn't played at home for almost a month. This is a massive visitor weekend for K-State football. So, Drew, take it from there. Uh, wh- what, do, what do people need to know about where this thing is going to look this weekend? Because it, it, it's, a, it's a wild number. You were telling me how many guys were going to be there over the weekend. I think you said – all but five commits in the the class are going to be there. There's a lot of different notes to dig into here. So I'll, I'll let you throw out the big ones off the top. So the raw number that I, I've heard is upwards of probably more than 70, which is an insane amount. And then of that 70, you're probably looking at close to, close to 40 to 45 or in what I would call like that top target number i think that there's if i if i'm doing the math correctly here and that that is a wild assumption that there's probably around like 36 37 uh players that are coming to have k-state offers 15 now of the eight or 14 of the 18 uh commitments for k-state or 15 of the 18 2025 commits now uh all coming to campus all for this game, two or three official visitors, one uncommitted official visitor, two commits. Uh, the other raw number would be, I think there's four in the top seven in the on three industry ranking in the 2026 class for the state of Kansas. And just, it is one of the biggest and most talented weekends that K-State has had recruiting wise in, in a long time. Like probably the biggest one uh, that I can remember uh, covering at K-State. And you you look at it too, and we talked about this last week on our recruiting update. Uh, one of the main headliners is Lincoln Cure coming back and being in Manhattan again. And, and that's still the only visit that he has scheduled and it's happening and he's he will be in Manhattan again. And I think that's a big deal. Yeah, absolutely a big deal because I, I know that the Oregon stuff is out there. It's on the horizon. Everybody's going to kind of got to keep it in the back of their head. But you do think about uh, this is something that is tangible. It is in front of you. He will be there. And e- even after this weekend, there's still a week in between, right, when the the prospective Oregon visit could happen. So uh, there's a lot that could be done, and we know that, because it's been done to K-State before and K-State can do it to others, that you can make this visit be something that shuts down even the thought of making another trip out to Eugene. So that'll be something to kind of keep in mind and watch moving forward. We'll take a pause on that and get to some of the others real quick. But if you're looking for quality long-term care for a loved one, you can check out the Nickel Home. The Nickel Home is a nonprofit community-owned skilled nursing facility in Glasgow, Kansas, with a focus on creating the most individualized care for each of our elders. We offer many unique ways to care and entertain your loved ones and make them feel right at home in rural Kansas. Our facility features many common spaces for our 32 residents to use, both inside and out. Space is enhanced through over $750,000 in self-funded renovations over the past six years. A ratio of eight patients to one nursing aide helps us ensure your family feels just like our family and ensures we have plenty of time to provide quality, individualistic care for all those in our community. If you want to see what life has to offer in the future, visit us on Facebook at The Nickel Home or check out our webpage at www.nickelhome.org. Uh, self-funded right there. That sounds like uh, that sounds like a K-State stadium project, not a KU stadium project. Uh, sorry. Sorry. This not, I mean, if you're here, uh, this, I'll, I'll leave that to Fitz. You guys can go over and, 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 and l- listen to Fitz on that. He's uh, much more up to speed on that than I am. Uh, but uh, it felt like low hanging fruit there to make a, a Jayhawk joke uh, during no, that, this week. That, 
that was low hanging fruit. I, I enjoyed it. It was it was a good one. All right. So Lincoln Cure is obviously the headliner. Everything that goes into that. Um, but out of some of the other commits in the class and other notables that people should be aware of, uh, where should the uh, the eyes go on that? Uh, so the the first eyes, I think you go to another uh, another committed prospect and a guy that was out there and, and at one point looked like he could be, I wouldn't even say like a potential flip, but somebody that you probably needed to keep an eye on was, was RJ Collins. But really after, and you brought this up about how this could be a thing with Lincoln Cure, after RJ Collins visited last for the K-State game against Oklahoma State, which by the way feels like two years ago at this point. Um, but after he visited and took that visit, he kind of shut down anything USC related and now is fully, I think even more bought in. I think he was pretty bought in before, but now it's okay. Now he is really looking forward to getting to Manhattan again. Wasn't shy about tweeting about during the K-State West Virginia game over the weekend, last weekend either, and, and tweeting at Lincoln Cure and kind of, seeing if they still want to be roommates because that, that's kind of been where they, they've been heading towards uh, this entire time. Uh, some other notables, I, I think, and, and this shows how much I think that this game means to K-State and always will, it is when you can get almost all of your entire recruiting class to come to this game. I, I mean, Dominic Mitchell is from Arizona and is coming on his own dime to see this game. Monterey Elston from Arkansas will still be in Manhattan. Weston Polk is from Texas. He will still be here. So you just kind of see that and it's like, okay, they want their current group of commits to see number one, that this will probably be an electric atmosphere. Probably one of the best ones in, in the climate era. I would imagine just with this game being a night game against KU in 22, you probably didn't get that in a night game against KU because of the weather. But you look at the weather Saturday and it looks like it's going to be a perfect day. Uh, but you also want them to see how much this game means to K-State fans and to be there and to see it. So I, I think that that's pretty cool. And then the 2026 side, uh, there will be three... Uh, players that are currently like ranked in the on three industry ranking as a four star. Uh, the high, the probably the the main headliner again is a tight end from the state of Kansas. Uh, great Ben's Ian Primer. I think that K State's in a really really good spot for him as well. And, and just on this run of tight ends and this run of tight ends where K State does hasn't had to go very far, and that they can look in their own state and find all these guys. Uh, Primer, probably a battle right now between K-State and Nebraska. Uh, this will be his second visit to K-State. And, and then speaking of a, another 2026 guy that they don't have to go very far for, uh, this will be J.J. Dunnigan's third trip to Manhattan uh, to for a K-State game this fall. And, and I think that that's really noteworthy and something that needs to be spotlighted as K-State's had four home games, and he's been at three now after this Saturday. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a big weekend for K-State on the recruiting side with everything that is there and available to them. So uh, that's something to, to monitor throughout the weekend. Uh, one other thing to remind people of to keep an eye on, and again, this is probably more of a reminder for me because uh, I'm the idiot that still doesn't have a passport. Something uh, That might be a problem. My wife acted like it might be if I was still sitting here. Uh, but K-State is gearing up to go to Ireland. I, I think I'm going to be there, but – if I don't get on my horse and, and get on the passport thing, I may not be. Uh, but if you want to be there and you've already taken care of uh, your little piece of paper that lets you go to other countries, uh, then you can join the Wildcats because they're headed to Dublin, Ireland next August for the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Join your Wildcats by booking your getaway at Cats2Ireland.com. The best seats and hotels will go fast, so secure your package now. That's Cats, the number two, Ireland.com. All right, uh, anything else on the – football or basketball recruiting side to take note of because I know I guess basketball wise we know that Malik Thomas is supposed to be there but Joe Tipton of on three was kind of insinuating hey this is not uh looking like it may happen it seems like the the Tyson chicken money down in Fayetteville Arkansas might uh come through and reign supreme 
Uh, what's the latest on Malik Thomas and possibly another five-star whiff for K-State basketball? Yeah, it's looking like Malik Thomas will not uh, visit K-State this weekend, and it, it, I think that you hit it on the head. It looks like Arkansas will end up being the one that is victorious uh, to land Thomas. And, and that one's a stinger because it felt like if he would have visited K-State, that K-State was probably in one of the better spots for him. Uh, just with how long K-State had been on Thomas. Uh, so it, it, it kind of stings and let's now, okay, you you missed on Cam Ward. You're probably going to miss on uh, Darren Peterson. And now you've missed on Malik Thomas. Now it's, can you recover and find some pieces? Or do you just, again, wait until the portal opens? Because I, I think that we're kind of in that, in that mode of college basketball where high school recruiting isn't necessarily as important as it used to be like football will never get to that point because of just the sheer amount of players. But with basketball, when you're recruiting so few players to begin with in an ideal world, you're not, you're not recruiting more than probably three or four open spots a year. I think that you can really, you can backfill that with portal guys. So it, it stings for now because the anticipation of Thomas coming would have been extremely exciting. And especially when two weeks ago, it looked like the team that was turning was K-State, but now it's looking like it's going to be Arkansas. Well, yeah, it, it, that hurts. And, and you're right. Long-term, it, it, it can't really affect you too much because the transfer portal is such a bigger deal in basketball. And that's really the main way to kind of build up any holes in your roster. But it, it is still disappointing and, and really a, a concerning trend for K-State because they have worked so hard on a number of these guys and they've gotten themselves to be you know, in the neighborhood, but they still can't get anybody to, to choose them. Um, and look, there are a lot of different things that go into this. Obviously, we know that A.J. DeMonson and BYU, if that doesn't come together or it does come together and K-State isn't the, the pick, there's a lot of money that's being thrown out there right now. Same type of thing on the, you know, the Arkansas side with Malik Thomas or whoever else it is. Um, but at some point uh, you would like for K-State to, to land one of these guys. But it this should probably be said too for people that K-State has realized that in the, the high school recruiting sp space for basketball, if you aren't going to land one of those top guys, then there is no need for high school recruiting, really. It, it, it wastes a roster spot in the current generation of college basketball. So that's why they're going to continue to get these guys, and if they, they miss, it's really no skin off of anybody's back because they're just going to go and do it in the portal, which they have been successful at and they've already proven themselves with, uh, and then they'll just keep swinging at, at the, the guys that can come in and be true difference makers as freshmen because people are going to see David Castillo this year. And he well, he ended up as like a top 60, top 40 guy, somewhere in that range. Really good player coming out of high school. Players in his area where he was ranked coming out of high school, even those guys very rarely make a difference as a freshman or can contribute as a freshman. Like I think David Castillo, based on the sounds of it, is going to kind of be a unicorn for his spot in the recruiting rankings relative to the team that he's playing at, the league he's playing in, and and what kind of difference he can make. So that's at least some way to give a little bit of an idea of this situation. And not for people to panic, but I can definitely understand being frustrated uh, initially when you're like, oh, wow, they missed out on another one. Look, they have a strategy here, and I don't think the staff, while they would like to land these guys, I don't think that they are going to be sounding any alarm bells if they're not able to ever do it. No, I, I agree with that. The, the other interesting thing that we didn't really talk about uh, yesterday at Big 12 Media Days, but kind of just along the lines of where college basketball is right now, uh, in our sit down with Jerome Tang, I mean, he told you, uh, talking about Michaela Rich, that he thinks that Michaela Rich will be a good basketball player one day and hopes that it's at K State. Like that, that's just something that you have to do. And, and kind of deal with at the in the basketball world more than you do the football world because you don't want to take a guy as a high schooler 
and kind of feel like you wasted some development because he goes somewhere else. So, well, and and, and, because it just happened to him. I mean, they, they, they had brought in a class that was, they, they had three guys and they were dudes that were all top 150 players, but none of them were, you know, these big time difference makers that are like the one and done or future top first, you know, first round picks, not even top picks, but first round picks. And, you know, Data Ames played a lot, probably would have factored into the rotation this year. He decides to leave. RJ Jones had clear and obvious flaws in his game, but things to also like to think, hey, if you hang around, like you'd be a nice piece. He didn't want to do that. Mikhail Rich deserves a lot of credit, I think, for sticking around because like profiling these guys, you would have thought that he would have been the first guy to leave because there was a less clear path to the floor. So Yeah. It, so I, Excuse I, me, I I'm agree. still getting I, over it, but I like that's what I'm saying. Like, and that's where the, the recruiting thing sits on the basketball side of things right now. So it, it's 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 a mess, but the the basketball staff and a lot of these top staffs throughout the country, they have realized this and understood it. And if it comes down to it, let those guys that you used to recruit and try to develop, let them go elsewhere. And you know, once they're done after a year at whatever uh, mid major school or like low end, you know, power opponent, you you end up getting them in the portal anyway, and they're already developed and they already have game experience and they're ready immediately. Yeah, I, I don't really necessarily disagree with any of that. Uh, back back on the, the football front, though, if you want a full list, we have a list on the board right now. Uh, there'll be a story that comes out pro- probably pretty shortly that you it, it's just kind of a teaser, but links back to the full list. So that, that'll be out soon, too. And then we'll have a lot of stuff over the weekend. So it'll be a busy time. No doubt about it. Busy week at KSO. Busy week for the Cats. Busy week for recruiting, good and bad, uh, if you're following along with K-State football and basketball. But, all right, well, we're going to get out of here so I don't die. Uh, and hopefully uh, I'll be ready by Saturday, and that'll be your recruiting update. And then uh, everything else that we've got going on, you can go find it over at K-State Online. So go to On3, get hooked up there, and also continue – to uh, follow along right here on the KSO YouTube and podcast platforms because we'll have the preview with K-State KU coming out tomorrow. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching and listening to K-State Online. Back again tomorrow previewing the Sunflower Showdown.